this year, President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. This was signed back in March. Uh, and as part of the plan, there's a lot of pieces to it that are going to impact your health plan, specifically in areas around COBRA. We're getting a lot of questions, so I thought I would share just some of what we found in our research. And uh, we'll also, along with this video, provide kind of a printout of really our research notes of some of the things that we're finding. I want to be very clear, though, in stating that uh, there's a lot still yet to be determined, a lot of interpretation uh, and a lot that uh, many questions that have gone back to the Department of Labor, to the U.S. government uh, for clarity, because as is often the case in Washington, laws are passed, but not clear defined guidance is provided. Uh, so there's my disclaimer. Disclaimer one. Disclaimer two, I'm not an attorney. Uh, and so while we're reviewing this and we're reviewing this with our legal counsel, I want to make sure that that disclaimer is there as well. Uh, but nonetheless, there are extensive rules around subsidies that are now available to employees or eligible participants, I should say, under COBRA. And so I wanted to just provide some very high points, recognize there's a lot more details, but I didn't want this to be a 45 minute video. Uh, nonetheless, we will be here to answer questions. We'll pull in our compliance team when necessary. We just wanted to give you some guidance and overview as it sits based on what we know today. So first and foremost, what is the subsidy? Well, there's a subsidy that was set forth in the law, the ARPA, uh, that effectively covers 100% of the COBRA premiums for what are considered assistance eligible individuals. We'll define those here in a moment. Uh, for the periods, it's a six month period of April 1st of 2021 through the end of September. Uh, and so this is going to be very important as we start to talk about what this means, who's eligible, who can enroll. Now, I don't want to confuse the guidance that's in the ARPA with the uh, extension or moratorium of election period and premium uh, remittance that was part of last year's rules that were set forth by the DOL. So if you'll remember last year, uh, there were rules set forth by the DOL that said any persons as a result of the pandemic that were involuntarily terminated, um, that they could effectively extend their election period for up to 12 months and even paying for their COBRA for up to 12 months. That's still very much in play. This is different. This is specific to a subsidy that any eligible participant uh, is able to receive beginning on April 1st through September 21. So we're going to define the who's eligible, who is the assistance eligible persons, uh, and we'll define how they qualify for the subsidy, how you will be at reimbursed for the subsidy, because yes, you're going to have to front that money, uh, and how all that works. This is an important time to pause though and say, if you're working with a COBRA vendor, they should be helping assist in managing this for you. So obviously we always recommend that employers work with a qualified COBRA vendor as opposed to managing COBRA in-house themselves. This is a perfect example of why we recommend those things. So I'm gonna read through some notes, obviously, as we go through today. I'm gonna to provide you with the notes as part of this video uh, so that you'll have them as well. But specifically, the subsidy does provide for 100%, it's actually 102%, of the COBRA premiums, because remember, uh, COBRA premiums can have a 2% administration fee. So the federal government is going to subsidize this for qualified beneficiaries. So who are considered assistance eligible individuals? Uh, those are those who lose coverage involuntarily. Uh, so in other words, a reduction in hours, a reduction in employment or elimination of employment. Effectively, anybody who didn't voluntarily leave their employment is eligible for the subsidy so long as their original 18 month period occurs during the time of the subsidy. So to determine that, we've got to go all the way back to October of 2019. So someone who would have been eligible for COBRA on November 1st of 2019, technically will still be within their 18 month window on April 1st, which means that they could get one month of this subsidy. So that's very important to note. Uh, so that's part one. Uh, it does not include those who voluntarily terminated their employment. As I said earlier, if they left their job voluntarily, 
the subsidy doesn't apply to them. It also applies to eligible dependents. So those who, dependents who are covered under the plan then also receive their own individual uh, eligibility for the subsidy. So that's an important thing to distinctively note here. Um, again, there's a lot of clarity that has not been provided under the law. Uh, as far as um, specifically voluntarily and involuntary termination, but our, our suspect is anybody who saw reduction in hours or was uh, non-voluntarily terminated uh, would be eligible for the subsidy under this law. Now, this is where it starts to get a little quirky because uh, this creates within the law a new election period or a special enrollment period. So you could have had somebody who did not elect COBRA, notified you that they weren't taking COBRA, or took COBRA for a period of time and then dropped the COBRA. Um, now they can elect again uh, as of April 1st, so long as they're still within their original 18 months. Now, further guidance is need needed on those that might get extended coverage, so disability or due to a death of a, of a spouse, those types of things. Uh, the government has not given guidance on that yet. So right now, specific to the way the law is written as we see it, it's specifically within that original 18 month period. Okay, so anytime. This special election period means that they can enroll effectively April 1st. Unlike past rules where it says you had to enroll back to the original eligibility date, that's not the case here. So if I were terminated, let's say back in November of 2020, and I either notified the employer that I did not want to let COBRA, or I did for a period of time and dropped COBRA, or I just didn't make any election at all, I still now have the right to go and elect. And I can say I only want to elect beginning April 1st. I don't have to go all the way back to my original eligibility of COBRA back in November. I can say I only want it for the subsidized period. In addition, if I enroll during that subsidized period, my 18 months doesn't start from there. It starts from my original election period, but it will extend out the full remainder of my 18 months. So I could get the full six months so long as I was still in my 18 month window. I know, a lot of moving parts here. Try to stick with me, it's a lot to cover, okay? But that's the way that this law is written and works. And so if let's say my 18, month would end in May of 2021, then so too would my subsidized period and extension period, okay? So again, I'm not getting new extended periods of COBRA. I'm still in my original 18 month window, but now I can elect from April 1 to September 20, through September of 2021, so long as I'm still within that 18 month window or any portion of that 18 months that falls within those categories, okay? this applies to any plan that offers COBRA under federal law. Uh, it also applies to those that may not have to provide COBRA because maybe they're smaller employers if your state specifically has continuation laws or what we like to call mini COBRA. Uh, so Texas, for example, where, you know, where I am, has a uh, state continuance program. That would apply here. So small businesses who have to offer state continuance would in turn have to offer this extended period of time of subsidy. So it's important to note that. Technically, how does it work and how does the subsidy work? Well, first and foremost is if someone, a participant that's eligible has to elect, right? So they're not automatically enrolled. However, if they are currently on COBRA, they are automatically enrolled for the subsidy. But let's say that they originally didn't enroll in the subsidy, or didn't enroll in COBRA, I apologize. Then uh, they could, in effect, then go back and re-enroll. So, uh, but they have to do that. They're not automatically enrolled. And I think that's a question we're getting a lot, is if someone's still in their 18-month window, they didn't originally enroll in COBRA, do we have to automatically put them on COBRA? The answer is no. You do have to notify them of their rights, though, and we're gonna talk about that here in a second. As far as how you, the employer, are going to subsidize this, because again, you're fronting the money, uh, you would put them on COBRA if they elect, or if they were already on COBRA, they're gonna get the subsidy, so their premiums are waived. You will get it, uh, get reimbursed for this through a tax credit filed on your payroll, your quarterly payroll taxes, okay? There's some, some 
events where if there's not enough payroll tax to cover the COBRA premiums, and, and if that applies to you, reach out to us uh, and we can walk you through how you would get reimbursed by the federal government. But nonetheless, uh, the standard way is that uh, you would front the COBRA premiums and in turn, uh, those COBRA premiums would be uh, a tax credit to you on your quarterly tax filing for payroll taxes. Um, election requirements. So this is very important. So those who are already enrolled will automatically receive the subsidy, as I mentioned a moment ago. But those who are not covered uh, but may still have the right to elect because they're within that 18-month period, they must receive a notice. So if you're working with a COBRA vendor, that COBRA vendor is going to put together a model notice for this. Now, mind you, these notices have not been established by the federal government. The model notices are required by the federal government to be established by the Department of Labor uh, by no later than April 10th. So we're just a couple days away from that. Uh, at that point, uh, employers are given the ability to notify of this eligibility through the end of May. So it's not immediate. You don't have to hurry, rush out. We got to get this out. It's, it, you know, it is through May that you can go back and notify those eligible participants. Again, working with your COBRA vendor to do so. The other piece of this is, and things that you need to do, well, you need to start identifying who those people are. Again, we can help support that through your COBRA vendor of pulling those that were terminated uh, and were, would still be within their 18-month period of eligibility for COBRA. Uh, because those are the people that are going to need to receive the notice once the notice is provided by the Department of Labor. Uh, and again, if you're working with a COBRA vendor, they will be sending these notices out on your behalf. The second piece of this is, remember that the maximum time right now that COBRA subsidized is for the six month period, which means another notice must go out at between 15 and 45 days of the end of the subsidized period. So what does that mean? That means there'll be another notice that's going to have to go out towards the end of September or for any of those persons who are going to end their 18 month original period in that subsidized period. So again, a lot of moving parts. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of a fluid situation we're working through, but those are some of the key things that I think are important here. Uh, those who are not eligible for the subsidy are those that were terminated due to gross misconduct, right? Which again, if that's, if you've got specific employees there, we, we certainly want to have a conversation and give you guidance with our compliance team as to whether or not this uh, a gross misconduct could be applied. Uh, those who voluntarily terminated their employment, so hey, I, I don't want to work here anymore, well, they're not eligible for the subsidy. Um, and uh, two, those who become eligible for other group or qualified coverage. Now, that means group plan or Medicare, okay? That does not mean an individual policy on the exchange. That is not considered qualified for purposes of not being eligible for this subsidy. So again, lots of moving parts, things that we'll need to focus on. Um, and so there's a lot of additional guidance that's going to be going on. I'm trying to look through my notes here as, as we're doing this video. I know it's on the fly. Sorry it's not as polished as we normally would like it to be, but again, this is, um, this is a moving, moving target here. Um, employer reimbursed, yeah. So again, we, we're kind of talking through, we've, we've talked through the key highlights. Uh, again, my biggest recommendation would be if you've got specific questions, type them up to us and send them to us. Feel free to call us as well. But the good news is if you type your question and email it to us, we can sit down with our compliance team and make sure we answer your question exactly as you want it answered, uh, at least assuming that we have the information to do that. Again, I've said it three times, I'll say it again, additional guidance is forthcoming from the federal government. You gotta love it when the government passes laws and says, but we'll tell you how that's actually gonna work here in the coming days. Uh, but nonetheless, take a deep breath. We've got some time here because any notifications are not required to go out through uh, the end of May. A uh, couple key highlights I'm just gonna restate. Anybody within their original 18 month period, even if they either elected and then dropped or never elected at all, can enroll. This is a special enrollment period beginning April 1st. They can only continue that coverage for the 18 months. So if their 18 months expires inside of this six month window, then it's over. They do gain subsidies. They do not have to back pay premiums because premiums don't have to go back to the original date. However, they can if they're in that original 12 month moratorium that we learned about back in 2020. This is what happens when you have multiple laws that are now butting up against one another. Anyway, I've talked a lot. I've provided a lot of information, probably in a very rambling way, and for that I'm sorry. Uh, but nonetheless, we're staying on top of this. We're going to continue to follow it. As more information becomes available to us, we will certainly pass that along to you. Always feel free to contact uh, one, of your, one of your team members here, and we'll do all we can to help you out. 
Look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks so much.